Hey, hey, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Chris. And welcome to our story. So we've been gone for quite some time. We're back. <laughs> yes. And uh, we just have a little news to share with you. Um, we are going to uh, change our focus just a little bit. Now, we're still doing real estate on the back end, um, but right now, real estate is kind of taking care of yeah. itself. If, you have, if you've not been living under the rock for <laughs> right. the last year or so, you yeah. know that real estate has gotten out of control. And I've always spoke about how it has to make sense. Cause it does. Because if it don't, if, how, how the old saying go? If it don't make sense, don't do it. I don't if it know. don't make sense, it don't make a dollar or something like that. <laughs> so I may be saying that all the right. way wrong. But what we've been doing, we've been shifting our focus to other passive income. So if you want to hear boring videos about stocks and bonds and <laughs> stuff like that, let us know. We'll talk all about that. Yeah. But we're also venturing into some of our other um, interests. And we've kind of been working toward this po point for many years. Mm -hmm. You know, we've always said, hey, it doesn't have to make money now as long as it yeah. makes money on the back end when we, when we need it to. Because right. we had this vision maybe 10 years ago. When, I, when we sat down and we looked at my military retirement, we were like, hey, we have to replace a little over half of my income now to maintain that same standard of living. Mm -hmm. And we've been very blessed okay. and able to do so. And we've finally gotten to that point to where we can live off these passive forms of income, mm -hmm. as well as do a couple other things to bring some extra income in. You know, I still have a passion for giving back, so I do still work for a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk more about our hobbies. We got some very exciting yeah. things going on. Like we have a rising senior, you know, right. a 17-year-old yeah. so daughter. To college next year. Yeah. And right now we're enjoying. <laughs> Join the journey of taking her to colleges all over the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. as well as the Midwest to yeah. kind of see where, where her next journey in life will take her. Yeah, absolutely. And we have talked about this in the past. Um, we are thinking that this photography thing could be income later on. But right now we're just focusing on learning and getting better. And so we, uh, we're we going to speak about that later in the video. But yeah, photography. So, so Yeah, because you've heard me talk about it many <laughs> times before to where I'm out on the trails and mm -hmm. on the river oh, yeah. and I'm immersed in nature and I'm having a fantastic time, you know? And like Stephanie said, this may turn into a money-making venture mm -hmm. later on because I'm a big fan of B2B business and photography lends itself directly to that. There's a lot of work to be done um, working for companies like real estate companies doing their um, their photos for their listings and there's now this 3D photography they're doing during real estate and we may get into that later on but right now we're really just enjoying the journey and seeing where it takes us because I'm a firm believer in do what you love. Absolutely and so what we want to do is we want to start sharing that journey with you today. Um, we have uh, just got back from a from Alaska and we took a cruise out there with Royal Caribbean Quantum of the Sea. So, so that is not what happened. That was, so I wanted to go to Hawaii. <laughs> I wanted to sit on the beach with a mango tango in my hand. Okay. And, she, and Miss Adventurous <laughs> okay. over here was like, no, we've done that before. Let's do something different. And I will say... We had a good time. I was wrong. It was nice. Alaska was fabulous. Yes. So buckle up. Yes. It will be a great ride. And check it out. Okay. Okay, so this right <laughs> here is us on the deck of the cruise ship. You know, recently we had an opportunity to go up to Alaska. We have a 17-year-old daughter who's a rising senior, and we're visiting colleges. And whose choice was it to go to Alaska? Was that yours or I think that was you. <laughs> well, a, we, we had a decision to make. It was either Hawaii or Alaska, so I think we I'm did. a beach baby, so you know I would have I chosen sitting in the I thought sun. Alaska would be kind of cool. You know, and I was too. shocked. It was a good, great idea. But it was beautiful. So this is our first shot coming up here. Yeah. I this, took the shot. Yeah, this, you, and you can tell when she takes the shot. Right. She likes a more it's, dramatic edit. It's you know? the editing. Yeah, I think it's all in the editing. But um, it, I just thought it was beautiful. And I liked the waves and the designs in the waves as the boat was passing through. Yeah, I, and I thought you did a great job with your selections here. <laughs> I like that the shutter speed is fast enough that you can capture those lines. You know, if you were to pick right. a slower shutter speed, mm -hmm. it would have kind of mushed them together and kind of give you that smooth, milky look as right. opposed to those deep lines. And we could tell people how we even got started with this photography stuff. I mean, you started us off, right? Well, Stephanie has a background in television, so videography. <laughs> you know, and right, I've which also, is different yeah, from photography. But I, I, I've always had a passion for still photography. And a couple of years ago at the Twist, 
fist and some arms, you know, I shook some money loose and I was able to buy a camera. And then shortly after doing so, Stephanie kind of got back into it as well. Here's another shot. I believe this is my shot right yeah, here. Yeah, this is your shot. And, yeah. you, and you can definitely tell the difference in the edit. Because it's not so dramatic. Yeah. But I like the clouds. They look like they're hanging right in the middle of the air. Yeah, I tried to go for that Irish spring look, you know, <laughs> that kind of relaxing, trying to get that beachy vibe into the Alaskan pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, but what I was really trying to capture is the lines and the mm -hmm. water as well as the cloud line. I, th I thought yep. it came out great. It really did. So how did you get into photography? So I think you were saying you always been interested in photography. Is that what? Well, when I was younger, I think I was like <laughs> 15, my dad bought me a Pentax K1000. Ooh. You know, and then... Retro. I, yeah, yeah. And then I put a bad battery in it, ruined the camera. But then I went to go work at Walmart Photo Lab, so that kind of oh, kept yeah. me close to it for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. And then when I joined the Army, I just got away from it. But this picture here is pretty interesting because right now we're getting news from the captain. Oh, right. That yeah. a, a landslide has just happened and our Sagway excursion has been canceled. Right. So what yeah. they decided to do was to take us into the... The Andicott Arm. Yeah. So it's we, called the Endicott Arm, and it's really an ice field. It leads right up to a glacier in the back, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I think this is where I got this shot. Yeah, I believe this yeah, is I your did. shot. Yeah. You can definitely tell this is your shot. I really, but I, I like the editing because the, the color, the colors of the ocean were absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we live in the state of Washington, and I'm like, there's no way Alaska is more beautiful than Washington. I was wrong. It is gorgeous. Yeah, it is definitely gorgeous. <laughs> yes, it is. So... Then I'm thinking this whole, you got back into this photography thing. I mean, did you see somebody with a camera? You're like, you know, I just want to try it again or? Well, you know, I always played around with my iPhone taking pictures, but I really wanted to control some of the things that you just really can't control in iPhones. So I, see, yeah. I had a conversation. I can't remember who it was with. And I just decided to just come to you and you said, yeah, go yeah. for it. And well, then we I thought it was interesting because you kind of dug into it last year and you just went out on your own in the snow and the rain and all these things. And I'm like, oh, he's really into that. Yeah. I think it was, we got the GoPro first. Oh, right, the GoPro. We, we got the GoPro and really liked it. But the GoPro <laughs> does a good job. As you can see, this yeah. is a GoPro shot. Shot on the GoPro. And, yeah. and it does really good. But as you can see with this photo coming up, there's just some things that you can do with a camera that you can't do with a GoPro on an iPhone. This is one of Stephanie's pictures. Now, as you can, as you see, can tell, so dramatic. Person, you can see the <laughs> personality different, how right. dramatic this picture is. You but know? it's so beautiful because, again, it brings out, if you look at the blue in the sky and then you look at the blue on the ocean, they're two completely different blues. And with the editing, I like to kind of draw that it, out. Right? But I like to shot a lot because you can see the reflection and, and the water, oh, yeah. the composition is mm -hmm. great. You got some drama in the clouds. Mm -hmm. In the mountains, too. I, I think this is probably the photo of the day, even yeah. though my camera is far superior than yours. Cause, <laughs> far superior. Cause what happened was I got back into it. Yeah. And then, But you know how it is. So technology can only take you so far, and then you have right. to kind of step up. So, so you got a basic entry-level yeah, camera. So I initially bought, a, a, um, a they call it an enthusiast camera up a, um, a Canon T7i. Right. But it can only take me so far before I got to the point where I'm like, I know I'm a better photographer for this, and it's really not communicating. So I stepped up to the Canon R5. And then you said something about it's either you or the camera, yeah, right? I, so I wanted to get the best technology possible. Mm -hmm. That way I knew it was me and, and not, not the, the camera. camera. So I had to get better. So Stephanie took my uh T seven I and, and then you and got I the went R5. To the R five. And this is the picture taken with the R five. This is right your here. camera. Yeah, yeah. This and you can see Beautiful. We're we're about two football fields away from this, <laughs> right. this tugboat. And <laughs> right. you can literally read and touch it. You can literally reach out and touch it yeah. and read every sign on the boat. Mm -hmm. I think the colors came out great right. you know i put a slight edit on this to kind of reduce some of the um the, the noise but aside from that the, this that that um that r5 is a great camera and it really brings out the details in the photos do you want to talk about noise because we do have some viewers that probably don't have any photography experience yeah well, if you look at the pictures and the settings you'll see the iso and it's just to let more light hit the sensor but when you raise the iso up too high you'll get that kind of grainy look in the photos which can take away from it. Like here, this, this is picture, your shot yeah, here. This, this is, is the R, R, R5 there. This is the R5. Yeah. But this is us waking up in the morning, me just happen to look off the balcony yeah. of the boat, and there's fantastic photos out there. Now, oh, yeah. I will not lie. 
I was kind of thinking, uh, it's not going to be a really good photo trip because we're going to Alaska. I'm used to the beautiful turquoise water down in the Caribbean. Right. And I was 100% wrong. Oh, yeah, world. it was gorgeous. Every time I looked off the balcony, Alaska had something great to offer, something to take pictures of. Absolutely. And so basically what happened was Krishan bought the R5, which allowed me to um, inherit the T7i. And so I've been shooting on T7i. You'll see me in just a minute. I'll pick up uh, the camera and take a picture. Um, and it is a little bit frustrating when you're learning because Krishan will put me to the side and be like, hey, you know, because we're two totally different people. I like to go ahead on and get my camera out, take the lens cap off, uh, point and shoot, you know, because I just want to be out there and I want to kind of learn as I go. Oh, here's the next photo too. Yeah, this is with the R5. Yes, you know, yeah, this is your camera. The T7i, Again, look at the blue. It's the, totally the, the, the blue is a torque are great. That, that camera really brought it up. But the yeah. great thing about that T7i is it's, it has an enthusiast mode. So when you put it oh. in a different shot mode, it'll tell you exactly what you're taking pictures of. See, that's really nice, yeah. although it is inferior. But basically, um, so Krishana, he'll come over, we'll be out in the field, and we'll be shooting, and uh, Krishana come over, he'll be like, oh, now I need to teach you about the shutter speed, and ISO, you got your ISO too high, or your shutter speed is too quick. And I'm like, no, 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 and then I'll get upset when my photo didn't come out. He's like, see, I was trying to tell you. Okay, this is the R6 here. So yeah, this, this, is this is the R5. This is oh, the, the Canon R5. R5. Yeah. And this is another opportunity of Alaska showing out. Mm. It was the end of the day. We were leaving the um the deck, and I looked out, and I'm like, wow, it's a great shot. So I had to run back to the stateroom, <laughs> grab, grab the, the camera. camera, and I tried to take it out of the balcony, but the balcony had this little overhead. Oh, yeah, the, like the shelf. You know, the, we, 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 did, we didn't use the travel agent this time when you normally do, mm -hmm. but we picked a room that had an overhang, which ruined the view. So I had to run back upstairs to get this shot off the deck. Okay, now this was the well, one of the well watching trips yeah this is one of the well washing ships i will say we had the the, the the um the the boat operator the boat pilot was mm -hmm. a good guy but he was a goody two shoes oh, you know yeah. he was following the law yeah, following illegal the limits you can't get so close you got to turn your engine off but there was another boat operator that was out there and he was on top of the well yeah he was following no rules <laughs> right i thought no he was gonna jump on the well <laughs> back for a minute i mean he, he can literally touch they the were getting some amazing photos you know, but you did did you now how far away were you when you uh, got we, that we, shot? we were easily about two football fields away yeah so it's nice so your camera is oh you said it's a What's the range on that lens? So I have my um, workhorse lens is the Canon um, 70 by 200 uh, 2.8. 2.8 yeah. and that allows you to reach in and kind of grab it. Oh, yeah, and not, not as good as yours. Stephanie uses a, um, a 18 by 400. Right. But her image stabilization on that lens is not as Garbage. good as mine. Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I took this photo with my camera the Canon T7i. And this is the Mendenhall Glacier. And what's so cool about this is our tour guide told us that we're probably one of the last groups um, to see the Mendenhall Glacier because it's receding so fast because of global warming and the earth getting hot that that Mendenhall Glacier won't, won't be around for another five to ten years. So um, and I just was, feel like my photos aren't as good as yours. But, but of course So, so <laughs> Stephanie's upgrading to the R6 in the next right. couple months, so she'll mm -hmm. be able to see the difference. Because that in-body stabilization that is in that lens mm -hmm. and in that camera body right. is second to none. And I also, we also have the um, the Canon 50 millimeter. I want to say that is a 1.8 or, or 2.8. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that. But it has a good in-body in, in stabilization, stabilization as well. And once you switch over to that, and eventually we will get probably a 100 to 500 um, Canon lens with a good in-body stabilization. Down the road. That, it's That's expensive. Down the line. Yeah. So that we have to pace ourselves. So I mean, yeah, this... This, this is a hobby I love. It does cost a lot of money. But that, in the same token, when you go out there and you take these these photos, like I spend most of my time in the backyards, on the rivers and the trails. Right, the pictures, just practicing. practicing. And, and that's free. Right. You know, as opposed to being at the mall on the weekend shopping or going out and doing something that costs money. Right. I just get to grab that camera and the money I spent months ago. And plus, you know, we did real estate. We do real estate, too. So this stuff comes in handy right. when we have to take pictures of um, certain apartments or we have to document stuff for the insurance companies, these cameras come in really, really handy. So overall, what would, what would you say would be like your main couple of takeaways of actually 
you know, outside in the backyard on the Centennial Trail where you get to practice and then we get we get to Alaska and you're able to utilize those skills. And so do, do you feel like they translated or do you feel like you learned a lot more when you're on the cruise? Absolutely. My, I, I, usually I'm, when I'm out there on the trail or on the river taking pictures, everybody's like, hey, what are you taking pictures of? I'm like, <laughs> I'm practicing because I'd much rather go out there on that trail mm-hmm. and take a bad shot. Yeah. for free right. as opposed to paying a couple thousand dollars to go up to Alaska mm-hmm. and getting back to the state room and realizing that nothing came out. So those yeah. skills definitely translate. When you're zooming in on that random flower for the 15th time and getting it done, it really pays off. Awesome. Well, there you go. Okay, well, uh, that was the video. And I hope you guys really enjoyed our trip and our photos and Tell us what you think about it. Uh, we're interested in, in knowing what you think about our transition and some of the photos that we took on the trip. Yeah, so as you can see, we're we're really just getting back into photography and really enjoying this next phase in our life. But we'd like to hear more from you oh, all. Yeah. If you've been affected by the shift in the real estate market, mm-hmm. let us know. Yeah. How has it forced you to reimagine how you live your day-to-day lives? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think that's an excellent question. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the comments, you know, we want to hear from you and see what you think. And if you have any tips and tricks on the photos that we took, and what do you think about the photos we took? Could we have done a better job or what could we have done differently? Yeah. Or if you have some scenic place that you'd like to take oh. photos in, let us know. We're all about a good old road trip down there to take pictures. Oh yeah. And so we want to go ahead and wrap the video up. We want to thank you so much for watching and we want to know, we want you to know that you can do it and do something nice for someone today. And remember, we're just ordinary people trying to do extraordinary things. You got it.